Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 25th of March 2019 and the time has just gone 9.35 GMT. Uh, we've had a bit of a negative start to the European session. Uh, we had a major sell-off in Asia overnight, plus a lot of ground in the Nikkei 225 in Japan and the Hang Seng in, 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 um, in Hong Kong. rather. Um, basically, the, the mood of the last uh, couple of trading sessions has been quite negative, given um, the very disappointing manufacturing numbers we've seen out of France, Germany and the U.S., we had very disappointing manufacturing, number, manufacturing numbers out of Germany uh, on Friday. It was the lowest level since July 2012. And that has really has been the catalyst uh, for the sell-off in global equity markets uh, over the last two days. Um, this, there are kind of renewed concerns about the state of, of the global economy. Um, and that has essentially been the, kind of the, the major theme of this particular session. Um, we did, we did have some positive news out of Germany this morning. Uh, the German um, IFO business climate set, uh, index uh, came in at 96, uh, 90, 99.6 uh, ahead of expectations um, of 98.5. So some positive news. But nonetheless, uh, traders are still a bit on the, on the nervous side. Um, so take a look now at some of the uh, the major major markets and see how they've been performing. Excuse <coughs> me. Starting off with the FTSE 100, um, so back back on Thursday uh, last week, the FTSE 100 uh, hit a level not seen since October. So I'll give you an indication of how bullish the market originally was, and this large red candle here is the major sell-off that we saw on Friday. It was the largest the FTSE endured its largest daily loss in 2019. Uh, so sentiment is still a bit on the negative side. We're firmly we're still below this red line here at the 200-day moving average. And while we remain below the 30 moving average, which comes into play at 72.35, it's likely we could see further move to the downside. And if we do see further pressure to the downside on the FTSE 100, uh, support might be found from this region down here um, in late February, which comes to play at 7,040. But keeping in mind, there's been a wide upper trend in place in late December. Uh, so obviously, if, if, we, if we don't take out the, uh, the the lows of late February and if you just maybe say drifting around here down towards the 50 moving average this blue line here at just south of 7,100 if the wider upward trend does continue we could be we're looking at retesting the recent highs of 7,370 and looking beyond that we could be looking heading up towards the kind of psychology important 7,400 and if you go beyond that we then we be kind of creating new multi-month highs and we could be looking at targeting uh, this area up here, uh, 7,558. Take a look now what's going on over in Germany, the German market, the DAX. Similar situation whereby we endured a very large sell-off. Excuse me. We endured a very large sell-off uh, on, on Friday. But keep in mind that German market last Wednesday, uh, once again, hit a level not seen since mid-October. So... A multi-month high was reached last last um, last week, but this red candle here was the on the Friday the 22nd uh, signify the major loss that we saw on Friday, and on the back of those very disappointing manufacturing numbers. So, a similar situation whereby um, the market has been on, under intense pressure in the last couple of sessions. If we do continue to drift lower in the near term, support might be found from this yellow line here in the one day moving average. Which comes into play just above 11,200. Uh, we can see that uh, that the 100 day moving average actually has both resistance and also support here uh, in, in February and uh, well, in early February and mid February. So the metric has been uh, acting as support and or resistance recently. It makes it more likely it will do so again in the future. And if you draw a trend line from the highs of June to the highs of July to the highs of September, uh, we get this trend line along here. And if they, that, that the previous trend line resistance might yet again act as trend line support. So if we do manage to push on lower from here, support support might come into play in around the trend line, which will be in around eleven thousand one hundred. It is worth pointing out that the uh, the DAX is back below a fairly significant level here um, of eleven thousand six eleven thousand six hundred ninety or eleven thousand just shy of eleven thousand seven hundred. This area here was very significant, 
uh, and, and the market did manage to uh, it did, it did manage to act in resistance in early March. When it finally broke above it, that was a, that, would, that was a positive sign. But the market has probably moved back below it, and ultimately, while we remain below that level, it's likely we could see further losses. So we re we really would need to kind of take back uh, the eleven thousand seven hundred to the eleven thousand six hundred ninety mark uh, if we do have any, any chance of retesting the mid March uh, the, the, the March highs of eleven thousand eight hundred and twenty three. And if you go beyond that, then the next area to keep an eye for will be the big kind of psychologically important uh, 12,000. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll take a look now at what's going on over in the US with the S&P 500. <coughs> Excuse me. So the S&P 500, uh, speaking of, of important levels, um, last week the S&P 500 also racked up a multi-month high, uh, which is fairly significant in itself. But if you, just, if you keep an eye on this area here in around 2,817-2,820, the S&P 500 finally broke above that. That area is then in, in a way regarded to act as a bit of support, but now we're actually trading back below that. And ultimately, while we hold below that level, and in fact, we're currently uh, suggesting that the S&P 500 will open below, 11, 11, below 2,800, while we, we, we hold below the... 2,817, 820 mark, it's likely we could see further losses on the S&P 500. And it moves to, if you're looking out for areas of potential support, support might be found from this red line here, which is the 30 moving average, which comes into play at 2,754. And if you drop below that, support might be found from this trend line here. And if you draw a trend line between the lows of well, February 2016 with the lows of November 2016, you get this trend line along here. And we can see how it was well respected as support uh, back in October and November, and then acted as resistance on a couple of occasions in, in, uh, in, in 2019. And this trend line here might act, might act as support yet again. Uh, if, if Dove's as support, it might be, support might be found in around the 2720 mark. But keeping in mind, the S&P 500 has been in a solid upward trend for over three months now since uh, late December. If the market does continue to push on higher from here, and if we can take out 2,820, we could be looking heading up towards 2,866 this area in around here. And then beyond that, uh, the, the next, next area to keep an eye out for, <coughs> well, um, the next area beyond, beyond that will be the, uh, the, kind of the big psychological number of uh, 2,900. Take a look now on the gold market, and gold has been in a fairly decent upward trend since mid-November. So a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. This classic upward trend. Now, granted that the sell-off that we saw in February did manage to take off the, uh, did manage to create um, a, a lower low. So the lows of March took off the lows of mid-February, but we are pushing back higher again. Uh, so it would appear that the wider upward trend is still intact. And if you continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting a 1320. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at heading up, up towards the kind of 1350 region. And a move beyond that could take us up to the, um, the uh, levels of 1366, the uh, levels not seen uh, since the first quarter of 2018. Any move to the downside in, uh, in the gold market support might be, might be found from the uh, psychologically important 1300. And a move below that, might take us back down towards the um, uh, 1,280 mark or 1,276 in around here. Take a look now on the oil market. So we've seen a fairly de decent bounce back in a, a break crude oil since late December and in fact last week we hit levels not seen since mid-November so we had four month highs on the oil market so I'll give you an indication of how, how, how bullish things are but like I said given that there's a lot of uncertainty about global growth on Friday because of disappointing manufacturing numbers from France, Germany and the US the bit of concerns about what will the demand be for oil if manufacturing figures are weak so we have seen the oil market drift a bit lower uh, there's been a slight increase in negative momentum, so if you do manage to drift a bit lower on Brent, we could be heading back down towards $65 a barrel, or support might be found from this, this blue line here, and the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 64, spot 37. 
Uh, if the wider upward trend comes into play, the one that's been in place now for, for about four months, for uh, since late December, if that does come into play, we could be like heading back and forth this red line here, the two day moving average, which comes to play at 69 spot 74, and a move beyond that would then bring the psychology important 70 bucks per barrel into play. Looking now at WTI, similar picture, similar picture whereby WTI has been pushing higher since late December and we racked up a four month high uh, only last week. But of course, we did see a bit of a sell off on Friday. Uh, and if the market does manage to drift a bit lower from here, we could be looking heading back down towards $57 a barrel. We can see in the $57 area, it has access to resistance on a number of occasions. So old resistance might become new support. And if you drift below that, we could be looking heading back down towards this blue line here, the 50 movie average, which comes to play at 55 spot 13. We noticed that we saw a bit of consolidation uh, from the 50 movie average uh, back in early January. So if it ever was significant in the past, it makes it more likely that that will be in the future. If WTI can get above the psychological board at $60 a barrel, uh, we could be looking heading up towards the 30 movie average, this red line here, which comes to play at 61 spot 78. Take a look now at euro versus the US dollar. Euro dollar. So US euro dollar has been in a solid, uh, pretty obvious downward trend since uh, since, since January, mid January. A series of higher highs and higher lows. Um, granted, the highs of March did manage to take off the highs of late February, but as you can see here, we've endured another sell off. And if the uh, if the, if the um, if they, if they get a downward trend that's been in play in the last couple of, last couple of days continues, we could see the market head back down towards the uh, the early March the uh, the early March lows of 111 spot 76 in around here, and a break below that might bring us back down towards 1 spot 1110. Uh, we really would need to be taking off the recent high of 1 spot 1448 uh, before we can actually consider maybe you kind know, of shaking off the recent downward trend. And if we go beyond that, the next year to keep an eye forward to the upside will be the early January high of 1 spot 1570. Uh, take a look at what's going on with the pound. So the pound uh, has been a fairly solid upward trend for three months, uh, like a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. And ultimately, while we hold above this red line here, the 100 day moving average, which comes to play just under 1 spot 30. If we hold above that, we, you know, we, we could maintain in the, the wider upward trend. So we could be we could look at heading up towards the uh, 1 spot 33.61 region. Uh, and if we go beyond that, we could be looking at heading up towards the uh, uh, level not seen since June 2018 in at 1 spot 34.72. Uh, it's only if you, if you have a size of the break below the kind of 130 trading moving average, which could end play at 1 spot 29.80. It's only if you, if you have a size of break below that. Could then we be looking heading back down towards it one spot 27.75 area in around here. Uh, in terms of what are the major events of the week, well, we are, our week ahead article can be found on our website if you go to cmcmarkets.com and then take a look at one of the news and analysis section. Uh, you'll find the week ahead article. So later today, uh, we have an Apple are, are, are launching, launching their uh, new, new uh, video streaming service. It's going to be uh, a rival of Amazon Prime and also Netflix, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, tomorrow, Fever, Fever, Fever 3 um, have full year figures out, um, the British drinks company. AG Bar also have full year numbers out um, to, uh, from, from the UK tomorrow. On Wednesday, Leader Group uh, have first quarter numbers. Uh, on Thursday, Lyft uh, have their IPO. They are floating on the NASDAQ. On uh, Thursday, we also have fourth quarter GDP from the US. And also in relation to uh, in relation to Brexit, um, so the European Union have granted Theresa May the, uh, the, the, the extension that she requested. But depending on which, depending on whether, whether, whether um, MPs back Theresa May's withdrawal agreement. It depends on when the exit date will actually be. It might be mid-April, it might be late May, depending on how things go. And also on Friday, uh, we have the UK fourth quarter GDP, and we have the uh, European Union uh, CPI numbers, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, if you have any comment to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review of the reviews. Thank you very much.